Hi everyone, in prior videos we had talked about using balance equation and molar masses to help convert between the mass of one species to mass of another in a chemical reaction. The reaction we looked at before has exactly the right quantities of each reactant we need. For example, in the combustion of octane reaction shown here, our example has exactly 2 moles of octane and 25 moles of oxygen gas. In real life, this is often not true. To illustrate the idea, I'm bringing back the example I used in a previous video of making pancakes. The abbreviated recipe I have is one cup of flour mixed with two eggs and half a teaspoon of baking powder to make five pancakes. Now let's consider a real life situation should you decide to make a pancake. Most likely you'll go and check what you have in your pantry. In this case, you happen to have the following quantities. 3 cups of flour, 10 eggs, and 4 teaspoons of baking powder. The question of course is, how many pancakes can you make with these ingredients? In this case, we don't have the correct ratio of all 3 ingredients. Another way to say this is that we have too little of some ingredients and too much of other ingredients. This means of course that if we use up one of the ingredients, we can't make any more pancakes. So how should we figure out how many pancakes we can make? Well, we can go ahead and calculate how many pancakes we will get in theory if we can use up each of the ingredients. For example, if we end up using all the flour, we will get 15 pancakes because each cup of flour gives us 5 pancakes. So 3 cups of flour will in theory gives us 15 pancakes. Now with the 10 eggs, we can make 25 pancakes in theory because every two eggs gives us five pancakes. Lastly, if we use up all the four teaspoons of baking powder, we will end up getting 40 pancakes. In this case, because each half a teaspoon gives us five pancakes. So the question is, how does this calculation that we just did help us determine how many pancakes we can actually make? Well, the ingredient, which is the smallest in amount will also end up giving us the smallest amount of products. So if we look at these theoretical amount of pancakes, we see that the flour is the ingredient that will give us the fewest number of pancakes. In chemistry, we would call the flour our limiting reactant. It just means the reactant that limits how much product, a pancake in this case, we can get. The other reactants, the eggs and the baking powder, are called excess reactant because there are more of these than we can use. So after we use up all the flour, we still have some eggs and some baking powder left, but we can't make any more pancakes since there's no more flour. Now the number of pancakes we calculate for each of the ingredients is what we call a theoretical yield. It's the amount of product we get in theory if we're able to use up each of the ingredients. So as you can see, the reactant that gives us the smallest theoretical yield is our limiting reactant. Finally, let's say we go ahead and make the pancake mix to make our pancakes. But while we're pouring the mix on the pancake maker, we spill some of them. In the end, we end up only making 11 pancakes due to the spill. So even though in theory we expect to get 15 pancakes, in practice we only get 11 pancakes. The 11 pancakes is what we call our actual yield, which is what we actually get. Of course, if you're planning to make 15 pancakes and you only get 11, you're not too happy about it because you're wasting your ingredients. So we have one more number we need to calculate, which is how close is your actual yield to your theoretical yield? This number is called a percent yield and it's calculated by taking the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. In the case of our example here, this ends up being 11 pancakes divided by 15 pancakes times 100% to give us 73%. The reason you calculate this number is so that next time when you're making pancakes again, your goal is to improve the percent yield. So let's say you're more careful next time around and you only spill a little bit of your pancake mix. So you end up making 13 pancakes. 
out of the 15. If you do that percent yield calculation again, this would give you 87%, which is a nice improvement compared to the 73% you have originally. So to summarize the ideas that we just discussed, we have the following definitions. Limiting reactant, or sometimes called limiting reagent, theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield. I also want to point out that we have the term excess reactant that I mentioned earlier, which is the reactant that is left over after all the limiting reactants are used up. Okay, let's now apply these concepts to a chemical reaction. We're going to talk about a chemical reaction shown right here, where you have titanium reacting with chlorine forming titanium for chloride and in this case the equation is already balanced for you so that makes life a little bit easier and what we were told is we're going to begin with 1.8 moles of titanium and 3.2 moles of chlorine and the question is what is the limiting reactant and theoretical yield of TiCl4 in moles so the way you solve problems like this is actually explained right there in the notes just like we did with the pancake example, what you're going to do first is you're going to have to figure out what's the limiting reactant. And to figure out the limiting reactant, we have to calculate how much product that will be made in moles if we use up each reactant. That's exactly what we did earlier with the pancakes, where we say, if we end up using all the flour, how much pancake or how many pancakes are we gonna get? If we use up all the eggs, how many pancakes are we gonna get? And so on. So we're gonna just repeat that same idea here for a chemical reaction. In this case, we're gonna calculate the number of moles. So let me show you what I did here on the right side. I've worked that out. So here I said, what is the number mole of TiCl4, which is our product, that we're gonna get if we use up all our Ti? That's our first reactant. And to do that, we just take the number of moles of Ti that we have, which is this number, and we're gonna multiply that using our balance equation, our mole to mole ratio between the product TiCl4 and the reactant Ti. And as it happens in that balance equation, the ratio is one to one. So we end up getting 1.8 mole TiCl4 if we use up all our Ti. And we're gonna repeat that calculation using the other reactant, which is chlorine. We're given 3.2 moles of chlorine, so if we multiply it using our mole to mole ratio, chlorine has a coefficient of two, so then it becomes one to two is the mole to mole ratio, and that gives us 1.6 mole of TiCl4. Once you do that calculation, the second step is to interpret the meaning of the numbers you got, and the meaning is that the reactant that gives you the smallest amount of product is your limiting reactant. So in this case, when we compare the size of these two numbers, 1.6 versus 1.8, we see that this is smaller, so that tells us that our limiting reactant is Cl2, because that's the one that gives us less product. Once we do that, we can go ahead and calculate the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is the amount of product, specifically the mass of the product that we expect to get. Now we already calculate the number of moles of the product. We know it's gonna be 1.6. So to get the mass, all we need to do is just take that number of moles and multiply it by the molar mass of TiCl4, which you can calculate in the periodic table to give you 189.679. And so your final answer should be this, rounded to the nearest sig fig, would be 3.0 times 10 to the second grams. Okay. Let me show you an example of how to carry out one of these limiting reactant and yield calculation. I'm going to take this example right here because it covers all the different definitions that we have in this particular video. So it says, consider the following reaction between NIS2 and O2, and they give you the balance equation already, so that saves you some time. You have 11.2 grams of NIS2 reacting with 5.43 grams of O2, and it produces 4.86 grams of NiO, and it's asking you to determine the limiting reactant, theoretical yield, and percent yield for the reaction. The theoretical yield is for NiO in this case. Okay, so I've written the balance equation on the right side, and the first thing is to place some of the numbers that we have there in context. What information are they giving us? So the first thing is 11.2 grams of NIS2. Well, that's just the amount of NIS2 that we have originally. So we're gonna write that in. 
5.43 grams of O2, that's the corresponding quantity for oxygen. So in other words, we mix these two things together. The way you can think about it is these are the things that you have in your pantry in our analogy earlier, and we're going to mix them. Now, it tells you that we end up getting 4.86 grams of NiO. Now, this number is an important one to keep in mind. What that is, is the number that you end up getting when you run your reaction, so that has to be your actual yield of NiO. So the question is, how do we get all the other numbers? Well, the limiting reactant is the one that's gonna take us some time because what we need to do, remember, for limiting reactant is we need to compare which of these two reactants, NiS2 and O2, gives us fewer amount of product. In this case, since we're later on being asked for the theoretical yield of NiO, you might as well go ahead and calculate how much NiO you would get if you were to use up each of your reactant. That goes back to the same approach we used earlier with our pancakes, which is to say that we try to figure out how many pancakes we're gonna get if we use up each of our ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Remember that to be able to do that, I have to convert the masses that I'm given to number of moles. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna calculate the mass of NiO if we use up all NiS2, okay? And I start with 11.2 grams of NiS2. I use my molar mass to change from grams to moles. And this of course requires me to look up the periodic table. And I find that that number is 122.83 grams per mole. And that allows me to cancel this. Now I need to convert from NIS2 to NIO. For that, I just need the coefficients of the species. NIO is two, NIS2 is also two. So I end up getting 0.09 1183 mole of NiO. Now you might ask why not go ahead and calculate the mass. You could do that. That's not a problem. I just decided not to do that in this case. I decided to skip that one step and just compare the number of moles of NiO. So this is what we would get if we were to use up all our NiS2. Let's do the second calculation, which is what is the mass of NiO, the same product, if we use up the other reactant? which is oxygen. Well, the calculation is fairly similar. You start with your oxygen, and then you have to convert that to moles of oxygen. That's 32 grams per mole is the molar mass. And then now you're converting between oxygen and NiO. The coefficients for NiO is two, or oxygen is five. And when you calculate this out, you end up getting 0 0.06, 7875 moles of NiO. And just like our example with pancakes earlier, what we're looking for is the reactant that gives us the least amount of product. It's pretty clear by comparing these two numbers right here that the oxygen gives us less product, so oxygen is our limiting reactant. Now we're going to go on to the next question, which is what's the theoretical yield of NiO. Well, once we know which one is the limiting reactant to get the theoretical yield, it's just getting the mass of NiO that we expect if we were to use up all our limiting reactant. Well, we already know that the number of moles of NiO that we would get would be this number. So to get the mass or theoretical yield, it's just a matter of taking that number of moles and then multiplying by the molar mass, which is 76.6928 grams per mole of NiO. And if you calculate it, you'll get that answer 5.20552238 grams. And of course, if this is your final answer, you're going to round this to the correct significant figures, which would be 5.21 grams of NiO. Last question here is about the percent yield. The percent yield of NiO is going to be its actual yield over its theoretical yield times 100%. The actual yield is given in the question. It's 4.86 grams. In this case, since I'm doing calculation, I don't want to use my rounded numbers, but I'm just going to use my calculated number. And if I do that, I should get 93.4%.